pretty much you, we start off with what causes avalanches. What type of snowpack, when do you see avalanches, why do you see them, and then we talk about trigger points, uh, terrain traps, what kind of situations will start an avalanche, what gear works best, what to do if you get caught in an avalanche, your best chances of surviving, and what to do if someone else gets caught in an avalanche, how to perform a good rescue and an effective rescue. The other thing is we analyze how to go about your day as far as approaching terrain. Do we start our day high angle, low angle? How do we determine if it's unstable out there? And then we do a lot of terrain analysis. We'll look at slides, look at pictures and say, well, here's your island of safety. This is where you want to park. This is where you don't want to park. This is where you could potentially trigger an avalanche. The key thing why it's important is it increases their odds in avalanche terrain. It's sad to see rescues or avalanche accidents go wrong uh, because people didn't have the right gear and the right training. And that's one of the reasons I got into avalanche uh, instructions. We were going on rescues, recovering bodies, and people were making basic mistakes. And with a little bit of training, it can make a huge difference. And the training is really starting to pay off. Uh, I believe five years ago, Midwest riders were 50% of the avalanche fatality, snowmobile avalanche fatalities in the United States, and now that has dropped to zero. They're very receptive to training. The Midwest riders, I find, are very receptive to avalanche education. Um, many of them are new to mountain riding. They want to increase their education. They're being prepared. They're better prepared than a lot of the Western riders. Where the Western rider, uh, they're avalanche knowledge perception is much higher than it actually is and that's true in avalanches in general people their perceived knowledge is much higher than it actually is the western rider is the toughest one to get in a classroom they think they know it all and in the last few years they've been almost 100 percent of the avalanche fatalities now the mid you don't have avalanches back in the midwest but the midwestern riders are very serious about the sport and they head out west on a regular basis and the education is paying off with them the Western rider, you know, they have a beacon on, but most of them don't know how to use it. For the snowmobilers, if uh, having a snowmobile specific course, it's, it's from a snowmobiler's perspective. It's what works for snowmobiling. Some of the ski techniques work for snowmobilers, but not all of them do. And you really have to understand the sport, and I've been snowmobiling since I was 10 years old. I know how snowmobilers work as a group, uh, what techniques work to increase your odds in avalanche terrain. You know, I had someone say that in a class uh, a couple of years ago. He stood up and he said, you know, I'm not sure why I'm taking this class. I don't go into avalanche terrain. And then he came up to me at heyday and said, you know, I owe you a huge apology. Uh, we do go in avalanche terrain. We didn't realize it. And he buried a friend in an avalanche, but he had taken the class and he had the composure to pull off an extremely impressive rescue and he saved the person's life from what he learned in a four hour class. Many people feel that they're not an avalanche train. One of the things I do in class is I hand around a slope meter to show people what a 30 to 45 degree slope is. Most people don't realize they're on a 30 to 45 degree slope. They, need, they think it has to be a much steeper slope, but it actually doesn't. So it's an awareness. It's, most people take a class and say, wow, this has been a huge eye opener. We learned what we're doing right, but we also learned what we're doing wrong. The essentials are a beacon, shovel, and probe, and a backpack. All your, your beacon goes on yourself, the shovel and probe go on a backpack. And the reason why it goes in a backpack is if you and a couple of snowmobilers get buried in an avalanche and the snowmobiles get buried and your shovel and probe are on the snowmobile, you really have no help to those people in uncovering them. The shovel needs to be on your body. So a beacon, shovel, probe, and then the other thing that's becoming very popular is an avalanche airbag pack which if deployed, it, it, you have a 98% chance of being on the surface of the snow. Uh, preventing the burial is the key to surviving an avalanche. Well, I think the, the key thing is everybody in your group should have avalanche training. It doesn't do you a lot of good if one person has avalanche training and um, if Jacob has it and he took the class, but if he gets buried, how can the other people help him? Everybody should be on the same page because 90% of the avalanches are triggered 
by you or someone in your group triggers the avalanche that kills someone. So if everybody's on the same wavelength, you're much safer. And there's certain people you want to ride with and there's certain people you don't want to ride with. Um, finding out about avalanches, there's one website, it's called avalanche.org. If you're going to Canada, Canada it's avalanche.ca. For avalanche classes, my website is avalanche1.com, it's a numerical one. For weather reports, the one I find best is noaa.government, n-o-a-a.gov. Great snow reports, great weather reports. On avalanche1.com, you'll find out all the classes. I do classes in 15 states. They're the techniques are proven, they're effective, and I make the classes affordable. I travel throughout the country and I make it easy for you to get avalanche education. Boy, if you had to bring it down to some really basic things, have the right gear for, for one. Because if you get buried without a beacon, it's very hard to find someone without a beacon. But we, what I cover in class is the five big rules of the backcountry. Number one is only one at a time. Uh, in avalanche terrain, like when someone's climbing a hill, it's only one at a time. And the reason for that is if you have one person buried, the odds of rescue, rescuing them is much better when you have multiple searchers. If you have three people buried with one searcher, the odds are against them. The second thing we teach is um, get out of the way if you're down below. If someone's on a hill, you don't go above them. Number three is have a plan. Who's first on the slope? Who's last? Where are you stopping? What's your escape route? The fourth big rule is stay in voice, voice or visual contact. And then number five is alter your riding according to the danger. If it's high danger, we're keeping it low angle. 